All right, let's stay with the story and take you back uh, to the DA conference now where our anchor, my co-anchor, Iman Rapeti, is standing by with Natasha Mazzoni. Iman? Bongiwe, good afternoon. I don't know if you can hear some of the background noise, but we've just been entertained and Jerusalem has been reanimated for the audience here at the Gallagher Estates with the DA's Congress 2023. And you actually crossed to me exactly on time because they literally just finished um, their song. And the mood here certainly seems to be one of lightness. I, I took a walk a little bit earlier on uh, through the Congress Hall. Uh, a lot of keen listening to the speeches there by John Steenhuisen and uh, Mpo Palazze. But this afternoon, I'm sitting in our studio here with uh, Natasha Mazzone, who, by the way, has thrown her hat in the ring for an executive position in the DA, and this is for the position of Deputy Federal Chair. So let's bring her in straight away. Natasha, good afternoon, and welcome to uh, the SAB. Thank you. It's always so lovely to be with you. Yeah, and, and you know, I sense as you walked in this, this mood of expectation and lightness and so on, would you say that that is the dominant theme, the dominant current that's running through the conference and the Congress right now? Absolutely. It's um, a feeling of hope, a feeling of rejuvenation, I think a feeling of relief because we feel like the DA that we used to know and used to love so much. The DA went through a very difficult period and that period is over and we have, we have increased our support dramatically. We have had wonderful results in by-elections recently. Um, we've been seeing such an upsurge in people really looking towards us as the government in waiting. Uh, we've seen amazing results coming out of uh, court cases that the DA has taken to court Finally, things are happening when it comes to our charges that we laid about, about state capture. I mean, I think there was a time that you and I were talking twice a day about charges that we'd laid on state capture. So things like that are, are starting to really happen. So there's a feeling, a mood of happiness, excitement. And yeah. this 2024 election is going to be a really exciting period for us. It's interesting because the way that you describe it almost sounds like a Lazarus moment. And I think just before Easter, it's probably appropriate to, to quote, uh, you know, from yeah. the Christian tradition, um, a Lazarus moment, mo moment in that, as you say, you have been going through a rough patch as a party. John Steenhuisen said, we fixed ourselves and now yeah. we're going to fix the country. Uh, that was his rallying call towards the end of his speech. What characterized those hard years for the DA in, from the DA's perspective? We as a public have our view, but from your perspective, why were those the horrible years? Well, we had a horrible time because we had the resignation of our leader and uh, very horrible circumstances. We'd, we'd had a review. And, you know, when an when a organization like a, the Democratic Alliance, it's such a huge machine, is analyzed so closely and every single one of your problems is identified and explained, it's not an easy thing to look at. I mean, we've done it with the SABC in Parliament. It's, it's, it's not nice for employees. It's not nice for you sitting there. So then we had Musi resign. We had uh, Ethel resign. We we had uh, Mashaba resign, then we had to start this whole series of coalitions, which was a completely new concept um, that South Africa was going into, and it's a concept that we are now accustomed to and we know how to deal with, but at the time it was incredibly difficult, and that's why John says we've managed to fix the DA. We went from being really feeling rather well, not rather, extremely let down and uh, extremely despondent to really hopeful, seeing an amazing leader leading us forward, being with us on the streets, going door to door with us, never having to worry about is the leader going to be with us or is he going to be in his office, having a, a leadership that was open to everyone. Um, this election itself, I mean, we have never had it that eight people are standing for the deputy chair of the DA. So it just goes to show that people have this renewed excitement in the party. And I've got to tell you that I'm one of the candidates. So three of us will be picked tomorrow. Yeah. We'll be ranked. Yeah. And although I'm in it to win it, of course, I have to tell you that even if I don't win it, 
it's not the end of the world because I'm standing with people who are so talented mm. that I, I have faith in them. We're going to come back to your election fortunes. I mean, I appreciate the fact that you're saying in by-elections there have been some wins, but there have also been some massive setbacks um, for the party. I'll circle back to that in a moment. Mm. Just talk to us about how Musi Maimani is talked about within the party ranks now? Well, I don't think he really is talked about in the party ranks anymore. He doesn't really feature in the party ranks. Um, he went his way. We went our way. Uh, he started his own movement and uh, he does what he needs to do. Yeah. We have our own party and our party continues to move forward. And we've moved forward at a very rapid rate. I think John managed to turn the ship around very quickly from a very negative atmosphere to a very positive atmosphere. And you um, think he's a shoe in? For tomorrow's yeah. vote? In my opinion, yes. Okay, but let's talk then. Let's go back to um, your election fortunes. Uh, for the first time slowing down in the 2019 elections, I was hearing in Port Palace, and if I, re if I remember what you said correctly, because I didn't write it down, was that you've lost 1.4 million votes over, over the last while. That's, that's a massive hit. I mean, I appreciate yeah. that you want to take the glass half full approach, but there is a massive election you know, uh, support hemorrhaging that the DA has endured. There was a hemorrhaging, but we managed to stop that hemorrhaging in the 2020. 21 elections. So between the, 19, the, the 2019 elections and the 2021 elections, we saw a massive improvement. And we're seeing an improvement now to the point that polls are indicating that we are 10 points behind the ANC. Or 12, in, as I think John said in the, in, in, in the plenary. Uh, yeah. it's, it's anywhere between 10 and 12. It depends yeah. which agency you, you look at okay. and, and what average you take. But it's between 10 and 12. I always prefer to look at the 10 because I am a glass half full kind of girl. Um, but we're seeing an improvement. Uh, we're seeing the door-to-door -door interactions improving dramatically. And we're seeing just normal face-to-face -face activities. People are happy to see us again. There was a point where people were really sort of agitated. They were like, come on, the Democratic Alliance. Mm. You were the guys who weren't always internally fighting. You were the guys who had it together. You were the organized party, and we lost that. And I think that what we did is we got that back. And I mean, you can see it today. This is a world-class Congress. This is, this is a Congress that can, that can take on any primary anywhere in the world. It is, it is of that caliber. And um, I think going forward, you're just going to see more professionalism. You're going to see more enthusiasm. And yeah. you're going to see this, this sense of hope that we all have. But some would say, you know, it's an elusive unicorn when, when it comes to the national elections. Comparing local government elections, the national elections is not comparing the same things. Give me your prediction. I've heard some predictions from, from, from various uh, DA representatives on what they think they're going to get in 2024 and where they think the ANC's support is going to land in 2024. You want to share yours with us? Okay, so I'm superstitious, so I'm not going to give you a figure. My late father always used to say to me I could never watch a soccer game with him because <laughs> I, was, I, I always predicted a score and then I was always off on the score. So I'm not going to give you a percentage, but what I am going to tell you is this. I predict that the DA is going to be at the core of a new government that comes into power. And do you think you'll become the largest opposition or the largest party in South Africa? I think that we have a very good chance of becoming the largest party. If not, I think that we will have uh, the ability to form a, a kind of coalition and a core government where we have a massive say and a massive influence over that government. My hope is always that we are the largest out of all the parties, but we have to be realistic about the country that we live in. I mean, I, I, in 2019, I thought to myself, we have just proved that state capture happened. We have, we have just finished an ESCOM inquiry where we've proved that billions and billions of rands were stolen and still the country voted for the party that's harming them. Um, so I, I think that it's a mind shift that has to happen uh, across all South Africa that there can be another party that can that can be in the in uh, you know in mm -hmm. government. You think that's all it is? A mind shift that, that is going to deliver you the kind of support, exponential support that you need? It's heart, it's mind and action. Because we can want it as much as we want, we can tell you as much as we want, but if we don't show you 
then you're not going to believe us. Well, how are you going to show, right? So one of the ongoing sagas that's be, that we've been watching is, you know, for example, the leadership race in the city of Joburg or what's happening in Tswane, where they seem to be moving chairs all, you know, all the time. Yeah. Uh, you're not sure if you're going to have a mayor for long. You're not sure if you're going to have mm. a speaker for long. Problems compounded in Tswane, where there are massive financial irregularities. Absolutely. If that's the feet part that you're talking about, some would say maybe the feet are amputated. So. In Tswane, we've just managed to re-elect uh, our mayor. Brink, we've got yeah. Celia Brink. Celia is one of the finest politicians I've ever worked with. And if anyone can turn around the fortunes of Tswane, it's Celia. I have complete faith in him. I watch Jordan Hill Lewis and what he does in Cape Town. And I look at Alan Windy and what he does in the Western Cape. And I think to myself, if we can copy that and, and make sure that that kind of governance is rolled out across the country, we are definitely on a winning ricket. And people are semigrating down to the Western Cape because things just work better. It's a better place to live. There aren't these enormous potholes. There aren't constant problems. It's a secure government. But coalition governments are very difficult. And we're a pretty new democracy, let's be honest. And when it comes to coalitions, we are very new at coalitions. So we're getting used to how these coalitions work and how we negotiate in these so coalitions. So what's your outlook then for how you are going to, you know, you use the, the ship and the turnaround analogy. What's the outlook for the residents of Tswane? I think the residents of Tswane are going to see an immediate turnaround with Celia. He is all about delivery. The councillors are all ready and waiting to deliver services. Uh, the instruction from John has always been delivery first. And I think that we're going to see a delivery of service very quickly coming out fast because it has to come out fast because we have to regain the trust of the residents of Tswane. I'm a resident of Tswane and I need to trust in my own party. I need to see the potholes in my street fixed. I need to see my street lights working. Mm. And I know that Celia and the team that he's chosen are the people to do that. So you mentioned John uh, and with, with a great deal of, you know, kind of conviction in the way that he can lead and the results that he can get for you um, as a party. There, there was that moment where, you know, you lost your, your, your DA chief whip position, which mm. a lot of people described as a demotion in, mm. in, in favor of someone else. Uh, now you're throwing your hat in the ring for one of three uh, deputy federal um, uh, leader positions. Um, how, how do you get over that? You know, some of the setbacks in, in, in politics and in your political career to the point where you feel it's time for me to, you know, to as ascend to the executive, so to speak. Iman, one thing that I've learned in life is that sometimes you have to be very careful what you wish for. I hated being the chief whip. I am a fighter. Everyone knows it. I have the nickname of the Rottweiler. And when you're the chief whip, you are the head girl. You are in charge of the administration. You are in charge of looking after discipline in your caucus. And you really have to behave yourself in parliament. That's not my style. So I felt very constricted in my role. But that's what I appreciate about John. I was able to sit down with my leader and maturely say to him, this isn't working. This isn't what we thought it was going to be. So this was at your behest? It was a mutual decision because John could see that I was not myself. I was not happy. And I mean, when, it's, when someone is really unhappy, any, anyone can see it. I mean, it was perfectly obvious to anyone who knew me. Mm. And is, I mean, John's known me since I was 16 years old. It was perfectly obvious that I wasn't suited for the role. He's now put me in as his uh, ad, uh, national security advisor and the shadow minister of state security. I'm completely in my element. Okay. I'm back to fighting the bad guys. I am back to being able to make outrageous comments in parliament that that I'm known for making because I say it as I see it okay. and I use my parliamentary privilege and I, I personally think I'm a, I'm a very happy and very new person for it. But I don't think in other political parties I would have been able to sit down with a leader and have that kind of conversation. Natasha, we're going to leave it there and we'll see how things play out uh, tomorrow, I think it is, when yes, that vote goes morning. ahead. And you'll get all the voting and election results live from the SABC. I'm going to hand you back to Johannesburg and a quick ad break, but just to let you know, we'll have a top analysis for you at five o'clock, and we also have uh, DA Federal Chair, uh, Council Chair Helen Ziller as our guest between six 
and 6.30. There's so much um, to watch and everything that you don't want to miss out on. So please do keep it locked on the SABC back just now.